It's the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's GlomCon. Thank you again to the uh, the organizers, especially to uh, Dr. Wagerspeck and um, and Dr. Mayer uh, for the invitation to present today at uh, at GlomCon. And so uh, today, what I thought I would do is is really kind of talk about a couple of uh, stories. One is uh, the old part of the title is uh, kind of using a, a classical or forward genetic approach to really try to understand what the molecular basis of the process of basement is. This is clearly a uh, pathologic finding that we see in um, several diseases that present with nephrotic range proteinuria. So I was curious, what, is, what unites, what's the common molecular mechanism that unites this presentation uh, for all these disease processes? In the second half, I will discuss some more uh, recent insights um, after providing some historical perspective on collapsing glomerulopathy, a uh, kind of severe uh, variant of FSGS. So today, of course, we're gonna be talking about the protocyte, which is this specialized uh, um, this epithelial cell that lies on the outer aspect of the, uh, the glomerular capillaries. These cells have a very specialized structure seen in this uh, scanning electron micro, uh, micrograph where they have these very finely interdigitating uh, foot processes uh, um, which uh, provide uh, the final barrier uh, to the, uh, the glomerular filtration barrier. So when we look at this ultrastructurally, uh, here on the left, we can see a schematic of the filtration barrier. We think a lot about protocytes, which lie on the outer aspect of the capillary loop, but really it's an integration of uh, multiple components, including the protocyte, the very thick and specialized glomerular basement membrane, the fenestrated endothelial cell, and uh, often overlooked is the endothelial surface layer or glycocalyx, uh, which is, aligns the luminal aspect of the glomerular capillaries. So really all four of these components function together uh, to make sure that uh, not a lot of albumin is, or serum proteins get into the primary filtrate and that all cellular components stay within the circulation. So on the right, you can see the actual electron micrograph version of the schematic on the left. And again, you can see the nice basement membrane that orients uh, the structures. On the outer aspect, you can see the protocytes with their foot processes. On the inner aspect, you can see the endothelial cells, which have little holes or fenestrae, which allow fluid uh, to pass through um, to the next step of the filtration barrier. So I've been interested for a long time in trying to understand what happens when we have glomerular disease and specifically focal and segmental glomerular sclerosis or FSGS, uh, which represents an irreversible scarring of the glomerular tuft. So here you have a couple of photographs on the, uh, stained with uh, PAS. On the left, you can see a normal glomerulus to orient yourself. And so you can see that there are very thin, delicate mesangial regions and patent capillary loops here outlined uh, with these pink uh, basement membranes. By contrast, in segmental sclerosis, often a segment of the glomerular capillary tuft, uh, which I'm outlining here with my cursor, is occluded by either a combination of matrix or foam cells or other material and debris, which results in a plugging up of those capillaries and segmental scarring, sometimes with attachment to the adjacent uh, Bowman scapula as well. Now, this isn't a single disease. This is really an end, uh, uh, um, end stage pathologic presentation of multiple different kinds of in injury processes. These could be genetic uh, risk factors, uh, genetic mutations. They could be acquired uh, risk factors. Um, they can also be environmental exposures. And then of course, there could be any combination of all those uh, factors in any particular individual patient. So the the histologic finding for itself is not specific for the, the mechanism, but we do know that in almost all cases of proteinuric diseases, FSGS included, that there's a common pathway uh, because all of these result in effacement or spreading of the foot processes. So this is shown in a couple of different ways uh, from this uh, nice uh, article on Kidney International in 2010. So you can see in a scanning electron micrograph, uh, again, that these are the protocytes with well-preserved foot processes that interdigitate almost like uh, two combs coming together. In cross-section in a transmission electron micrograph, again, you can see the nice well-preserved foot processes and shown schematically over here in this little cartoon. However, in many diseases with uh, significant proteinuria, such as minimal change disease, FSGS, um, membranous nephropathy, and even some of the inflammatory, uh, inflammatory glomerular nephritides, um, the protocytes will simplify their architecture. Uh, and uh, this is resulting in this flattening and spreading of protocytes, 
which is referred to as foot process effacement that is shown over here in the top right. And schematically...